previous lecture uh, we have seen some simple rotor model uh, in which we considered the flexibility of the bearing and uh, especially when we considered the hydrodynamic especially when we considered the hydrodynamic bearing model there is a uh, eight linearized coefficient of the stiffness and damping and we showed that those coefficients we can able to calculate at equilibrium positions and that equilibrium position changes with speed. So, these coefficients in actual practice they will vary with speed. So, whatever the analysis we did earlier uh, that can consider the speed dependency of such uh, stiffness and damping coefficients of the B rings. Uh, today we will uh, study effect of uh, gyroscopic couple on the natural frequency or the critical speed of the system. Uh, this gyroscopic effect generally occurs when the disc is spinning at high speed and is, it is wobbling uh, that means, when simultaneously tilting of the disc is taking place during the whirling motion. And uh, because of this particular gyroscopic effect we will see this that even the critical the natural frequency the world natural frequency will now no longer will be equal to the spin speed. So, if we are considering a perfectly balanced rotor and if we are operating at certain speed the world frequency may not be equal to the, the spin speed. And uh, so, for this particular case we will see that uh, as we are changing the speed the gyroscopic moment changes and that changes the whirl frequency. Uh, so, the whirl frequency basically now it will depend upon the speed of the rotor itself. Uh, two things we will observe especially regarding the natural frequency that uh, in this particular case when gyroscopic effect is there uh, the splitting of the natural frequency we will observe and this particular phenomena we will see in subsequent lecture. Today we will concentrate on a synchronous world condition in which we will try to calculate the critical speed rather than obtaining the world frequency. So, uh, with uh, this particular module of the gyroscopic couple now the definition of the world frequency critical speed they will be uh, quite distinct they will that and we will observe that uh, <coughs> we will be having phenomena of uh, forward fold and backward fold also because of the splitting of the natural frequency and corresponding we will be having critical speeds also which will be having forward fold and backward fold uh, in which case the spin direction or the spin sense of rotation and the world uh, sense of rotation may be same or different. So, for this particular case this uh, will this is the overview of the lecture in which we will be doing the analysis of a simple cantilever rotor with a thin disc at the end. We will not consider the mass of the shaft only the elasticity of the shaft will be considered and disc will will be considering as a rigid is having no warping of the disc in this particular analysis. Uh, in this we will see that the gyroscopic couple uh, effect onto the critical speed. Basically, we will be calculating the what is the critical speed because of this gyroscopic couple and some concepts which we will be covering in this lecture is the gyroscopic effect, disc effect or the diametral mass moment of inertia how it changes the critical speed of the uh, rotor system. So, now with some simple example let us see when this gyroscopic couple will be predominant and uh, for let us take a simply supported case in which this is the bearing axis and we have rigid bearings that is simply supported condition and this is the shaft elastic line. Let us say disc is at the center of the mid span of the shaft. So, during whirling 
will observe the disc would not tilt it is spinning about its own axis with omega but disc tilting will not take place because is there at the mid span and at mid, mid span the shaft slope is zero so, <coughs> so during whirling of this there will not be any uh, tilting of the disc would take place. So, once this disc is not um, tilting about its diameter, uh, there will not be any gyroscopic couple effect onto this particular system. But if this, but if the same system is there with uh, disc at offset position. So, let us say here. So, in this particular case because the disc at any particular position should always be perpendicular to the shaft elastic line. So, we will find that the disc will tilting about its one of the diameter in this particular uh, plane. So, not only we are having spinning of the shaft, but the disc itself is having some kind of precession frequency and that is the whirling frequency of the disc. So, this wobbling motion of the disc uh, along with the spinning of the shaft uh, would give the gyroscopic couple. So, we expect uh, this gyroscopic couple effect will be present in this particular model. Another case if we consider let us say a cantilever cantilever shaft and this shaft is massless only elasticity is there and let us say disc is in the form of a point mass m and if this is spinning at certain frequency during whirling we expect this will occupy this position. So, this is one of the case if this particular cantilever beam is having a, a large thin disc of the same mass, but having diametral mass moment of inertia of the disc in this particular because this point mass diametral mass moment of inertia will be nearly 0 when this is spinning we will find that during whirling this disc would be tilting about its diameter. So, in this particular case we expect a gyroscope. So, you can able to see there will be precision frequency of the uh, disc will, would be there. Uh, so, if we consider this particular model of the rotor and in this in which the mass at the free end are same, but only difference is here is point mass, here it is disc. So, we expect the critical speed of this system and this system may sh should not be same and especially when the this particular speed is high we will find that the gyroscopic couple will def will make the critical speed of this system and this system are different. So, with this uh, example uh, is very clear that when the gyroscopic couple will be uh, present in the system and when it, it, it will not be present. So, when point mass is there in a cantilever beam we cannot expect a, a gyroscopic couple in that because its diametral mass moment of inertia is 0. So, now, so now we will consider now we will consider a, a simple cantilever beam uh, we will not be considering any unbalance of that uh, or, or in that particular disc. Uh, we are assuming that there is no unbalance in the disc and uh, we are operating near the critical speed of the system. So, that the natural frequency or the whirl frequency is equal to the spin speed. As I mentioned when gyroscopic couple is there the whirl frequency and the spin speed may not be same, but in this particular case 
we are considering a very special case in which we are trying to find out at what world frequency uh, the spin speed is, at what uh, speed it is the world frequency is equal to the spin speed. So, that means, we are trying to find out directly the critical speed uh, of the system and in this particular case let us try to analyze a cantilever beam with a large disc at the free end. So, if this is the disc, this shaft is spinning and disc is also spinning with the same speed and because of this we will see that for this particular configuration let us say when the shaft is at the bottom most position during a whirling. If we try to see uh, for this particular instant how the centrifugal force of various masses of the discs are uh, acting. For this particular instant we will see that the mass element which is away from the uh, spin axis will be having large centrifugal force because it is spinning about this as will come toward the spin axis this centrifugal forces will be lesser and lesser like this. Now, if we see the effect of this centrifugal force what they are trying to do to the disc uh, they are trying to apply a couple which is acting in counterclockwise direction. So, it is trying to so it is trying to uh, orient the disc to its original vertical position uh, because the tilt of the disc during whirling is this angle and this particular moment is trying to oppose that tilting uh, which is coming from the centrifugal force. So, we will see that because of this moment uh, effective stiffness of the shaft uh, against the rotation is becoming higher because this particular moment is trying to prevent the uh, it is making this particular angular displacement lesser and lesser because of the uh, this moment and you can expect that when the centrifugal force is high at if we are increasing the speed as we are increasing the speed this will be, will be more and more and we expect uh, this moment will be more and because of that effective stiffness of the system increases. And as we know uh, from fundamental that the natural frequency is defined as root square k by m. So, if stiffness is increasing mass is same. So, we expect that the natural frequency of the system should be increasing. So, we will find that in this particular case when we are rotating the, the rotor at certain speed and we are trying to find out a condition for at what speed the whirl frequency is equal to spin speed for a balanced rotor the effective st stiffness is increasing and because of that the natural frequency is also increasing. So, this particular phenomena uh, which I have illustrated through the centrifugal force concept uh, is we will see in more detail through the concept of the uh, quasi static analysis in which we will be finding out what is the effective the force and moment this particular centrifugal force are at applying at the free end of the shaft and from there we will try to get the frequency equation to calculate the, the critical speed of the system. Now, uh, we will analyze uh, how the, the world frequency of the system uh, increases with the, the, the spin speed of the sh shaft because of the centrifugal force. Uh, let us for that particular case we will take the same example and now we will see this particular disc from side how this particular 
our system is giving us the ok. So, let us say this is bearing axis B to and this particular axis bearing axis we are representing as a z or this angle is or let us say this direction is y. So, this angle will represent as phi x this is the static deflection let us say delta of the center of the shaft or the disc. So, here let us say the intersection of this axis to the disc is uh, I am writing as B uh, this is the shaft center which is coming from here and this B to C is distance that is translatory displacement of the uh, shaft from its equi uh, equilibrium position of the bearing axis. Now, if we consider a small mass let us say this is at uh, radius r 1 from the bearing axis. So, uh, if we see the motion of this particular uh, disc and as I told we are looking into the condition of synchronous world. So, let us see this particular motion uh, what it represent. So, in the synchronous world condition uh, the spin speed that is the spinning of the uh, disc and the whirling frequency this is the whirling frequency let us say this is the cantilever beam. So, this whirling frequency and the spin uh, should be same. Now, when we are considering this synchronous world condition. So, what will happen for this particular case the shaft will bend and once it is bent it will be rotating about bearing axis in the rigid body mode without uh, the without the bending and uh, uh, without bending of the shaft. So, bending of the shaft if we see the fibers in this particular shaft which is in tension will be always be in tension during the whirling and which is compression will always be in compression during whirling for the synchronous whirl condition. So, it will be as a rigid body uh, it will be rotating about the bearing axis. So, that is a synchronous whirl condition and in this particular case we if we see that each and every particle onto the shaft will be making a if uh, shaft is symmetric a circular path it will be making a circular path about the bearing axis in also uh, on the disc if we take any element of the mass that also will be making a circular path maybe the radius of the circular path will be different for each of them. So, in this particular figure the r 1 which I have shown here. So, this particular disc during the synchronous fold will be making a, a circle with the r 1 as a radius and bearing axis as the center. So, it will be making a circular uh, motion. So, we can expect that because of this the centrifugal force which will be acting on this mass let us say this mass is small d m. So, this will be along the direction of the r 1 only. So, let us say this is centrifugal force m d m omega square r 1 this is acting in along the direction of r 1. Now, this particular uh, motion of the whirling again let us see this particular whirling motion. So, this whirling motion which I told for synchronous fold is spinning is taking as a rigid body about the bearing axis. So, uh, and it is spinning also both are taking place uh, because of that that synchronous fold is taking place. If we consider this motion in two parts one is pure spinning at, o, at omega r p m or radians per second and then uh, without without rotation only whirling. So, basically in actual case both spinning and whirling take place simultaneously, but now I am considering spinning separately 
and whirling separately. So, in this particular case the disc is not spinning only it is whirling. So, in this particular case uh, we will see that the two motion which was uh, spinning and whirling simultaneously which was taking place we have split in two parts. So, when we are considering the spinning. So, we can able to see that this particular mass for that particular uh, rotation when we are considering pure spinning it is spinning about the center of the shaft. So, that means we can able to take the centrifugal force because of this as if let us say radius of the disc is r this will be d m omega square r and another case is this one the pure pure whirling in that particular case we expect uh, we expect this particular mass at this particular configuration will be again I can able to show here uh, this when pure whirling is taking place. So, when disc is coming from let us say top to bottom. So, when it has reached at the bottom the direction of the centrifugal force of that mass due to this uh, whirling will be toward the downward direction it is coming. So, at this position the the centrifugal force will be downward direction that means vertically downward. So, this component is that particular direction and this will be d m omega square delta because now when the disc has reached at the bottom each and every particle of the shaft is having delta displacement. So, uh, we will be having this particular uh, force centrifugal force. So, you can able to see that the the total displacement uh, which is a total uh, centrifugal force which is d m omega square r 1 is summation of uh, these two components due to pure spinning and pure whirling. Uh, this particular uh, forces which now we have got now we will take uh, the forces uh, component of this in two planes and we will try to find out because of these forces what are the resultant force and moment which is actually coming on to the rotor system for which I am drawing uh, let us say in one of the plane let us say this is z axis bearing axis and y vertical axis and disc is this one. So, this is the disc only I am showing it and let us say there is a particle here having a mass d m let us say that point is p and this is the shaft which is attached to the disc this is the shaft. Now, uh, this is the center of the disc C here uh, tilt is about x axis. So, phi x. Now, this is uh, this is the case for uh, pure whirling case. pure whirling motion there is no spinning. So, if you see from side of this view of the disc let us say this is y axis and this is x axis particle p is here is at radius r. Uh, and this is the center of the uh, center of the disc. Now, if you see this this particular force which is acting downward direction. So, for this particular configuration not only this mass each and every mass will be having same uh, inertia force because each and every particle of the disc is having delta displacement. So, this particular mass d m 
which is there at P will be having a force m omega square or d m omega square delta. So, each and every particle will be having same uh, force. This particular force on this plane is in this direction. So, this is d n omega square delta. If we consider a another point diametrically opposite to this here p prime, this will also be having same direction uh, force, same magnitude because the particle is d m. Here if p prime if we consider it will be having downward direction d m omega square delta. Now, you can able to see that if we consider all the masses in the system, they will add up and they are not cancelling each other basically all the forces are downward. So, if we add all such forces, this is for the elemental mass, if we add for all such masses of the system, we will get a net force and the direction of that force will be in the y direction. So, this is the net force which will be acting due to the pure whirling case. Pure whirling motion. Uh, regarding the in this particular case they are adding up to give the force in this. What about the moment you can able to see uh, this particular particle and this particle will produce about the center moment which will cancel each other because they are opposite to each other. So, there will not be any net moment due to this uh, here also if we try to take moment about this point these two will cancel each other. So, the net moment due to the whirling motion will be 0. So, moment will not be there due to the whirling motion only uh, this particular total mass of the disc into omega square delta force will be acting on this particular uh, disc. Now, let us see the pure rolling motion, pure spinning motion. Uh, now, now we will consider the pure uh, rolling, uh, pure spinning uh, motion of the uh, disc. So, in this particular case, I'm a, I am again drawing the free body diagram of the disc in let us say z y plane, z is the bearing axis. Uh, disc is here, shaft is this one. Now, if we take the diagram in other plane, we will see the disc like this. This is the center of the disc C, these are the y axis and x axis. P particle is let us say here and radius of that is r. Uh, let us say this inclination with respect to x is theta. Uh, here because of the pure spinning we have centrifugal force omega square r d m which is acting radially outward. Uh, this particular force we can able to take component in two directions. Uh, this particular from here we can able to relate let us say uh, this distance is y and this distance position of the from the position of the mass is x. So, we know that x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. So, the component which is there in the horizontal direction here, here will be having uh, value omega square r d m cos theta. This will be acting in the x direction and if we combine the r and cos theta, this can be written as omega x d m. Similarly, this is in the x direction. Similarly, in the y direction, the force component will give us omega square 
r d m sin theta that will give us omega square y d m because r and sin theta is y. Now, this particular force in this plane if we want to see the y component is acting in the direction of y x component is acting in the direction of x axis. So, if a particle is here the force one force is there in this direction the magnitude is omega square y d m. Other force the x direction x direction is that is perpendicular to the, the screen into the screen because according to the right hand rule uh, it will be inside the screen x will be inside the screen. So, this particular force component which is in x direction will be in the plane of the disc. So, we cannot able to see uh, that particular force here that will be on the plane of the disc, but the y component is along the y direction. So, we can able to see that this particular component is not on the plane of the disc. Now, uh, this particular distance so we can able to see that uh, this is y distance this angle is phi x so this distance will be y into phi x because this is y and the angle is phi x so this distance will be phi x so the component of this particular force will be making y phi x distance from the x axis uh, y axis. Now, if we uh, see this particular particle x component which is this direction if we take a particle here opposite number here. So, this particular force and this particular uh, mass force will balance each other because they are in the same plane. Uh, even and uh, if we consider another point let us say below this particular force in the y direction and this direct this particular force if we consider here p prime let us say which is below uh, this will act because it is spinning. So, it will act in this direction the magnitude of this will be same as the upper one. So, you can able to see that uh, they will make a couple they will balance each other, but they will make a couple and the magnitude of the couple we can able to find out will be. So, let us say for single mass d m the couple about the bearings uh, the shaft center will be that is in the y z plane omega square y d m is the force and moment arm is y phi x this is the moment arm this one. So, this this is a couple due to a da, mass d m if we sum such moments we can able to get the total moment due to the various forces and that will be giving us this and because omega is constant it will come out this is also independent of this integration. So, we will be having y square d m and we know y square d m is nothing but diametral mass moment of inertia of the shaft uh, uh, sorry of the disc about its diameter. Because in this particular uh, case So, in this particular case uh, when we are considering the pure spinning uh, um, I will speak on here. So, for the case uh, of pure spinning we found that the x component forces uh, are cancelling each other 
whereas uh, the forces in the y direction they are uh, they are giving a pure moment and that moment is the gyroscopic couple moment and in the previous case the pure whirling case we saw that the net force centrifugal force we were getting. So, effectively because of the pure spinning and pure whirling we got one force and one moment and now we will be using this to get the frequency equation. So, from the previous analysis of the pure whirling and pure spinning if we remove the disc onto the shaft we will be having inertia force and a moment and direction of moment in the previous slide we can able to see is this particular force is producing a uh, counterclockwise in y z plane. So, that particular direction we have retained here. Now, uh, now effectively now our problem is to uh, we have converted the dynamic uh, forces into a static force. So, that means uh, basically we have converted a dynamic uh, system to a quasi static system and now we will be obtaining uh, what is the deflection and angle because of this particular forces. And from strength of material deflection theory we have such relations like for displacement the linear displacement is given as because of the force. and because of moment so this is the linear displacement and force and moment if we are applying we will get this relation similarly for angular displacement we have relation fy l square to ei then due to moment because we are dealing with the linear system. So, because of this moment and force displacements can be added up to get these relations. So, this is coming from the deflection theory of the strength of material. So, any strength of material book can be referred for such relations. Now, we need to substitute the centrifugal force and gyroscopic moment in this expression. So, we can able to substitute like this gyroscopic moment and similarly in the deflection rotational uh, displacement. Now, we will see that uh, these two equation this equation 1 and 2 basically each and every term they contain either linear displacement or translatory displacement or angular displacement. Uh, here also delta is there here also phi x is there. So, all terms containing so basically they are homogeneous equation we can able to or uh, rearrange these equations like this m omega square l cube by e i minus 1 delta. So, I have taken this in one side and I have taken the delta common plus minus i d omega square l square by 2 e i phi x is equal to 0. So, this I have obtained from equation 1. Similarly, from equation 2, uh, 
we can able to get delta plus d omega square l by e i minus a plus 1 phi x is equal to 0. So, I have express this let us say this equation 3 and 4. So, equation 3 and 4 now we can able to put in a matrix form. So, we can able to write this as y phi x and because this homogeneous equation right hand side is 0. So, here we have m omega square l cube by 3 e i minus 1 first term then minus i d omega square l square by 2 e i and here minus omega square l square by 2 e i and here i d omega square l by e i plus 1. Now, this is a homogeneous equation uh, one solution is when both displacements are 0. So, that is the case when we are not considering the motion at all. So, for non trivial solution for non zero displacement the determinant of this matrix should be 0 and if we put the determinant of this matrix 0 we will get a polynomial in terms of the omega which is the, the critical speed of the system because we started with the world frequency is equal to omega. So, we were looking for the critical speed of the system directly. So, we will get a polynomial in terms of omega for this basically it is a quadratic in omega square. So, this equation will be after rearrangement of the this equation. This is the quad uh, square term then a constant term. So, this is a polynomial and we can close the bracket. We can able to solve this for omega square. The, the polynomial which we have got is basically a frequency equation and we could able to solve in terms of omega square, but in this particular expression uh, several variables are there. Uh, now, we will try to reduce the variables, so that we can able to do better interpretation of the this particular equation. So, I am defining two terms non dimensional terms. So, first is the critical speed effect critical speed function. So, that is is a non dimensional term defined as spin speed m l cube by e i and another is a mass effect disc mass effect this is a mu that I am defining as diametral mass moment of inertia divided by m l square. So, this is also these two are the non dimensional terms we can able to use this to rearrange this polynomial and if we do it we will get a much simpler expression in terms of the non dimensional parameter we defined. This So, this is much simpler and in this you can able to see there is a 
uh, only single disk parameter is there uh, others are included in the uh, non dimensional terms. Now, the solution of this we can able to get where this can be solved in closed form. So, the solution will be of this form we are getting two roots like this, but if we see carefully this expression uh, within the bracket term within the square root term uh, this particular disk effect is positive. So, this will be positive this is a positive. So, we can able to see that this term which is within square root is always greater than this one. Now, if we take the negative sign uh, we will get the this particular uh, the critical speed as imaginary quantity. So, that is not a feasible one. So, we can neglect the negative one and we will consider only the positive sign here. And with this if we plot the omega critical versus mu at mu is equal to 0 let us say. So, for mu is equal to 0 uh, we cannot able to solve from here we need to go here we need to multiply each quantity by mu. So, you can able to see that this term will vanish or uh, this term will give us for mu is equal to 0 from the frequency equation we will get uh, 4 omega bar critical square and we will get minus 12 is equal to 0. So, omega critical square is equal to 3. So, here for 0 mu we are getting value of the this as 3. Another case when mu is infinity tends to infinity we can able to see that these terms will vanish and these terms will vanish for infinity and if we simplify we will get this as equal to 12. So, that is here let us say this is 12. So, mu is equal to infinity means a uh, very large uh, disk or the disk with uh, large mass moment of inertia because diametral mass moment of inertia because mu is defined as i d by m l square. So, if this is large then this should be very large. Uh, so, for that particular case, so if we plot this particular equation we will get a curve like this asymptotically it will uh, this critical speed will be equal to infinity when uh, will be equal to 12 when the this particular frequency ratio you know, this disk effect is uh, very large. So, you can able to see if we say this one when mu is 0 what is this case mu is 0 means if you see here i d is 0. So, there is no mass moment of inertia of the disk that means that particular disk is a point mass. So, this is representing as a point mass disk this case when is having infinite diametral mass moment of inertia. So, inertia will be so high the disk will not tilt in that particular case and this is the general case of critical speed in which uh, it is varying with the disk effect. So, if disk effect is more and more if diametral mo mass moment of inertia is more and more we will be seeing the critical speed is increasing continuously, but it in is having some maximum value is equal to that is uh, equal to 12 the critical speed square is 12 there is a non dimensional parameter. Uh, today's lecture we have seen that how a critical speed for synchronous hull condition uh, of a cantilever beam uh, we have obtained. In this particular case we have considered the a very special case in which the not only the motion is the synchronous fold that is the spin speed and the the fold frequencies are same their direction is also same and 
we have seen that as we are increasing the disc effect, we are increasing the gyroscopic moment and because of that we are having increase in the critical speed. So, as we have seen in the beginning of the lecture, the centrifugal force tries to tilt the disc to its uh, original position. So, it effectively it increases the stiffness of the system and because of that the critical speed should increase. So, finally, we have seen that that particular effect as we are increasing the disc effect, the gyroscopic moment will be more and more and will be having uh, increase in the critical speed of the system due to the gyroscopic effect.